Today we're going to take this Heathkit IG102 RF signal generator. We're going to hook it up to this uh, HP331 Alpha Harmonic Distortion Analyzer and see how it does on the frequencies that we measured against the uh, TSG17 RF signal generator. See how they compare. Before I get started though, there's a mod I want to do. These 48 ohm resistors here, I've already clipped them out. I'm going to replace them with 220s. The thing is, is that uh, this attenuator, it, it dumps so much of the signal to ground that it, it's really hard to squeeze a signal out of this thing. So raising it to 220 will allow more of the signal to go out to the jack. And I could probably get up to about 1 volt peak to peak when I do this. Let's see what happens. This should give the unit a much higher peak to peak signal than previously possible. Not only will it make this possible to do this test on the HP331 Alpha, but it will also make future experiments uh, a lot more interesting. Looks like 220 was insufficient. This is full tilt. I'm only getting 600 millivolts. i got to use a lot more resistance than previously thought, so I'm going to have to go back in. It didn't work. This time I went with the Decade resistor box because I didn't want to swap these out all day. I come to find it takes about 700 ohms of resistance uh, to get just over 1 volt on the output uh, in the lowest attenuation setting. And we can see right here, this is what the waveform looks like at 1.07 peak to peak. This time I'll do a quick temporary install first and inspect the voltage. I ended up going with 800 is what I had and it said 1 and a quarter, but that's just fine too. Uh, a little too high is better than too low. That's why it's an attenuator knob. We're going to go with that and lock it down. We're going to use the same three frequencies from the last test set, uh, the 17. And I'm now getting uh, more than enough voltage to uh, drive this to full deflection. I'm just setting it up right now. Uh, now it's a full deflection. And I've also set this up for 190 because that's what we used last time. Uh, with that, we can get started with our first test. I think that's going to be the result of the first one right there. It is in the 10 range. And that means it's going to be 4.246, 4.6% for 190. So now we'll reset it. We will start our, our next test. Next one we're going to set to 455. That's going to be in this band right here. There's actually a, a little notch here for 455. Still going to go by whatever the counter says actually right on the money right on the dash because I have calibrated this there we go we're at 455 now I'm going to readjust uh, the sensitivity we're near at full deflection we're ready to start our test So we're at the three range. What we're looking at is just under two. We're seeing 1.56789, 1 1.95%. Let me move this cable here. 1.95%. Now I'll reset everything. The last measurement we're going to do is at the top of the range. It's still within this band, and it is uh, 600, which is what this thing is capable of doing, the maximum. Let's get to 600. There we are at 600. Now we'll adjust the sensitivity vernier for 600. And we're ready to begin.
So it looks like this is our final reading. In the three range, we're looking at 1.567, 1.8. Here's a comparison between this Heathkit IG102, which is not a solid state device, versus the TSG17. Within this limited range that I was able to test, we will see that both of them had a higher harmonic distortion in the lower range and got increasingly better as it approached uh, 455 and then 600. So interesting observation indeed that both of them were affected in the same manner, albeit the IG-102 was lower. So there it is. There's the harmonic distortion testing of the IG-102 as compared to the TSG-17. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.